economic inequalities and citizen dissatisfaction with establishment politics. The countries that tend to do well in our freedom score in our Scandinavian countries, Finland, Norway, Sweden, uh, they do well in our scores uh, traditionally. It's less corruption. They run elections well. Uh, I think those countries, by the way, will be challenged over the next number of years by some of the issues that challenge America and other countries where there's a greater diversity of, 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 of population, where there's more immigration. And that tends to uh, uh, provide tests for governments about how well they can protect the rights of other people as opposed to just a monolithic uh, majority. Our country is mostly Lithuanians. As more people are moving uh, into the country, it might, might create like an issue in the racism scale, whatever. Yeah, I hope not. We also went with the Syrian refugees to Germany, and um, I mean, all the Turkish immigration that's coming to Germany for years, we, we kind of see the same trend of people, I don't know, being bitter and um, like having the uh, having the thoughts of people stealing their jobs and stuff, and uh, I think that's probably the same in the U.S. with the, with especially from the southern immigration. But I mean, America is it's a country of immigration, so it's it's an ongoing process. But I think that's the main point, and people are afraid of um, of things changing. I guess in the end, Italy is a country I think that's about where we are. Italy has had a more chaotic democracy, and in Italy, it's an example of a country that really has not delivered, you know, strongly across the way for economic growth and, and really functioning of, of democracy. One in 